that in this video. This is part three to creating a custom calendar from scratch. And here we're gonna make some changes due to my mistakes, but uh, we'll talk about that in a second. And we're also gonna look at how to reset to the current date when we are on another month or another year in our calendar. So the changes we have to make here, when you created the weekdays list global in part one, don't set it to anything within the globals. It's actually a good idea to go ahead and lock it. I was having a conversation with two folks over in the G Plus community, Evelyn W and Scott Allman, and they pointed it out to me. If you set your list global weekdays to one of those days of the week, that will actually become your default value. So a way to fix this is to recreate that list global, don't set it to anything, and go ahead and lock it. That way, that default value that we want to return later will work out, and that's just a quick fix for that. So I did not know about this, sorry about that, and uh, now let's just talk about more mistakes I've made. Back in part two, when I said that we could use a list global for month, that was totally my mistake. Uh, we cannot do that. Yes, it did make things easier back then, so I want to address my mistake here. And the reason why we have to convert this to a text global, because we have to be able to go back to any month and that month's gonna be changing and we want to go to a specific month. And in this case, we want to go to the month that it currently is. This is going to allow us to reset to the current date when we are somewhere else on the calendar. So my apologies for that. I'm gonna go ahead and go over to the calendar from scratch part two. This will be renamed to part three and you can find this in my free components folder. Let's go over to globals and down here we have a list global for month but this needs to be a text global. So I'm just gonna create a new global month and I'm gonna make it a text. That's going to automatically get rid of the other month. And let me slide on over to my craft cow from scratch. So the list global is gone. I'm just going to set it to a random month right now. I'm just going to do one for January. Now it did change the name up here, but we're still going to need to change some of these buttons to get them to work right. Because with the list global, it was just as easy as either going to the previous value or the next value. So let's go change those codes real quick. I'm going to go back to the items, go over to everything, go over to month and year with buttons, and let's do the arrow back. Let's do this one right here. We'll go to its touch, and we want to toggle the global switch month. Now, since we have changed it, it's going to recognize it as a text global now, and now we need to type in a code to go back a month. Let's think about what we want to happen here. We're pressing the back button, so we want to go back a month. This is going to be subtracting one from our month. Now you may say, why couldn't we just use a list global? That's going to become more clear right here in a moment. But to make it go backwards, we want to say if GV month, if it's greater than one, because we're going backwards. So if our month is 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, all the way back up to two, because it's greater than one, we want to take GV month and subtract one from it because we want to go back a month. We're pressing the left arrow button. Now, what if GV month is not greater than one? That means in this case, it's going to be equal to one. Then we want to set it to 12 because if GV month is equal to one and we want to go back a month, we actually want to go back to the previous year, which is going to be December for our month, that's why I'm going to set this equal to 12. So that's the change that we have to make there. Let's check that. And now let's go ahead and go over to our right arrow. We will test these right here in a moment. So now going to this right arrow, let's go to its touch and let's change the code for our text global month. Now we're going forward a month. So if GV month if this is less than 12, so we're talking about January, February, all the way up to November, since we're going forward a month, we want to take GV month and add one to it. But if it's not less than 12, that means technically what's gonna be happening here, this means we will be on month 12, and if we want to go forward a month, we have to bump back around to January, so that's gonna set it to one, month one. This will be our code here. So those are the changes we had to make due to my mistake, and let's see if this is going to work. 
Right now I'm on January 2020. So if I go here, it is working just fine. We don't have to change anything inside of this because we have the same name for our global. And let's just keep on going. Let's make sure it round robins. So if we come all the way up to December 2020, now we should see January and 2021. And we do. Now let's go backwards and make sure it goes back to December of 2020, which it does. And I'm just going to check and make sure it round robins again. And we should go back to 2019. There we go. All right. So that works good. Now, why did we have to make this change? Why did I make a mistake? Let's back out of here and let's go to the text for December 2019. We want to be able to touch this and regardless of whatever month we are on in our calendar, I want to be able to touch this and go back to the current date. And let me show you that in the actual full calendar. I'm going to go over to another year. So let's just go to January of 2019. Now down here at the bottom, I just have a text item. This is not important, but today's date is October the 12th, 2018. And if I touch anywhere up here with this month and this year, notice what it's going to do. It resets the month to October. And as a matter of fact, down here in our agenda, we see 10, 12, 2018. And this is going to be helpful because this will allow you to go to that current date. And now we can see how many items we have on our agenda for that current date. So we're touching this month and really what are we doing? We are toggling three text globals. We're going to set the month when we touch this, we're going to set it to be the actual current month that is on. We're going to set the day of the month to be the actual day of the month that it currently is. And the same applies for the year. So let's go back over to our calendar from scratch. I already have this text item selected. So when I touch this text item, Later on, we will be adding another touch to this, but for now, let's toggle all of our text globals for month, day, and year. So I'm going to touch, and let's work on the month first. And what do we want to set the month to? We want to set it to the current month. So whatever the current month may be, now this is what we could not do with the list global. So DF, and if I just do an M, DFM will return the numerical month for the current month we're on. And as you can see, this is returning a 10 because it's October. Let's repeat this process for day. And we want to set this to DF and a single D. This will return the current day, a digit, in this case two digits, but if it was one digit, it would just return a nine or eight or a seven. Don't do DD here and don't do capital M, capital M either for the month. We just want to get uh, the digit of the month or the day in this case. Don't do two Ds because if it was like uh, October the 8th, it would do a 08 here for October and all we want is that single digit if there is one digit. And last but not least, let's do the same thing for the year. And for year, we want all four digits. So let's do DF, Y, 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 Y. That will give us the four digit year. So now what should happen? We are toggling three different text globals here. So let me go over to January 2020. So clearly this month and this year is not October 2018. But if we touch this, Notice what's going to happen. It will take it back to the current month that it currently is and the current year that it currently is. Now to show you something else, I'm just going to come back to the calendar from scratch. I'm going to go over to this stack group and I'm going to add a text item. And for this text item, this is just for teaching purposes. So calendar date is, I'm going to do month and I want to return the GV month day i want to return the gv day you're going to see um, how the buttons are going to be helpful here as well and then for the year gv year so we got 10 12 2018 perfect now back when we created the buttons in part two and then yes we did make some minor changes today but when I start changing my months, this is going to change this month to whatever month our calendar is showing. And it's also going to change the year when the year changes. And if you recall, if you look back at part two, whenever we press these buttons here, it's going to set the day to zero. 
The reason why I chose it to do that is because when we go to a new month in our calendar, I want my agenda to show nothing because I technically haven't picked a specific date and then we can start actually touching dates in our calendar or days to get those agenda items. So as you can see here, as this is changing, yes, we are seeing the same month and the same year. Now, I did make this choice here. If I touch this month or this year up here, it's going to reset it to the current month, the current day, and the current year. This is a quick way to reset to the current date regardless of where we are on our calendar. Now I can delete that text item there. I don't need it. I just wanted to do that to show you really what's going on there. And there you have it, you know, making some changes. Yes, it was my mistake with the list global. Again, I apologize for that. But uh, maybe if you're a little bit iffy with your list globals versus your text globals, maybe that served as a teaching uh, part. I'm sure that will not be the only mistake I make in this tutorial because it is a very complex series that we're going to be diving into here. Now, I promise part four, we will finally dive into that first row, getting those first days of the month to show correctly. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.